It's quiet in the oceans of Kalagari. The sun shines brightly in the sky. An ocean seemingly empty is surely a sight to behold. But wait, what was that? Out of the corner of your eyes you spotted a small purple plant resting its roots in the deep ocean, letting the water brush against its broad leaves that try to soak up as much sunlight as they can. This plant is the start of something wonderful, of something seemingly alien. Kalagari isn't too alien to Earth. It orbits its sun at 1.7 AU, a comfortable distance away, where Earth is located around 1 AU from our sun. This sun that Kalagari orbits around is however 3% bigger. The radius of this planet is 3161.69 nice kilometers, around half that of Earth. It completes a full rotation around itself in 23.36 hours and has a gravity reduced by half. The pressure is also greatly reduced on this planet, meaning the atmosphere is thinner. The max temperature is 75 degrees Celsius and it can get as cold as minus 112 degrees, but the average temperature is a nice 22 degrees Celsius. Here is the planet with its information. This is however the planet's view when the first animal will come onto land and take its first breath of fresh air. We will start this adventure deep deep into the waters. Billions of years before that. The time seems to fly by. New and exotic plant life starts sprouting all around the ocean. On the land it's still barren but the oceans are already filled with all sorts of shapes and colors. Most creatures that swim around this cocktail of life are very small and in their beginning and most basic shape. They are the pioneers of life at around 52 million years on this planet, like the Os Draconae or mouth monster who flaps his little wings around to try its best to swim against the curve. Two small antennas stick in front of the creature, which uses them to filter feed on smaller, delicious meals all around it. The plants have also had a while to grow, like the Ospululont, one of the biggest plants in this ocean, so far at least. Its round body is adorned with two gigantic wing-shaped leaves, busy at work to provide this plant with its much needed photosynthesis, photosynthesis, with its much needed stuff. This plant has no idea what sprawling future it has ahead of it. Well, not just the plant, but the small pyramid-shaped fruits on the rim of its mouth. While most plants on this planet have chosen for the typical plan of shooting out its eggs in bulk and hoping some will be carried by the currents to a lucky bachelor to make new plants further away, this plant has developed its own unique way of procreation. These fruits, or dittery, have been evolved for millions and millions of years into the most sophisticated honing missiles in the sea. It works like this. The plant sits in the sun, soaking up every last bit of energy and uses that energy to make the much needed materials for furthering its species. The little fruits come in male and female form. The ratio of gender is around 20% female and 80% male. The female swims away into uncharted places in this massive ocean, not going too far with these underdeveloped tails, but far enough. It plops down on the ground and then uses its many tentacles as a sort of root system, digging themselves far down into the ground and waiting to grow into a full and marvelous dittery plant. Though the female detach themselves at the start of the year, the males only detach when the female egg carriers have fully developed, around five months later. The males now detach and start swimming around in search of any dittery plants that have recently sprouted. If the male finds a dittery plant, it swims into the opening and attaches itself to the plant, creating new dittery fruit. But if it doesn't find a plant, it will quickly fall to the floor and die. This way of procreating is tough, but makes for extreme diversity and has been the direct cause of its domination over the floor it resides in. As the plants start to spread, covering the ocean floor in their green and purple hues, the now also sprawling animals on their planet start to develop and grow too. One of these creatures, who at first was struggling against their weak currents, now dominates the oceans as one of the biggest creatures in these waters. 
As some reach almost 30 centimeters in length, these previous filter feeders have adapted to be the first animals on the planet to eat and digest plant matter. Their small and frail fins have grown into thick and sturdy flipper-like arms. With their round and primitive shaped bodies, these creatures kind of reminded me of cucumbers, so I will call these creatures Q. And no, these little fish will not end up turning future humans into weird abominations. Ugh, they truly give me the shivers. Plenty of other creatures on this planet start to follow the Q in eating the plants that cover this ocean floor. This is not good news for a dittery plant who develop their eggs outside of their bodies in very appealing and easy to gather D4s. A little D&D joke for you all. As the dittery plant reaches near extinction, this creature started to show up on the floors of the ocean. Obstantia piscis! Orchis carba has found the perfect niche to place itself in. If they remained unmoving, these slow-moving bottom feeders could easily blend in with the sand and rock-filled ocean floors. It uses the three mouths at the bottom of its body to eat the million-year worths of evolution and decay. You can also see its asshole. It uses a rough coat of leather-like skin to suction itself on the floor, to not be moved away from its meal by heavy currents. This creature has a rough life ahead of it. The camouflage on its body do aid it in survival, but just like the plants, as creatures start to look at their other ocean companions as meals, it's got to find a solution and fast not to be hunted to extinction. As creatures in the oceans grew, these carba cubs were just not in the right place. So, after finding themselves on the brink of extinction, some managed to find a new niche as bottom grazer omnivores at the more densely packed coral reefs, more towards the surface. Here, they could hide between coral. Here, they also start to elongate to more easily worm themselves through the canopy of sharp ridges and delicious plants growing from small corners and holes. As millions of years pass, their population grew again and provided them with pockets of light perceptors on their heads to more easily evade prey. All this time provided many of the creatures in this ocean with some creative ways of evading or hunting prey. But what comes next is what truly makes this world far from normal. While the Dittery plant spent millions of years perfecting its delivery system of eggs and by proxy stretched far and wide across the ocean floors, a fruit with small, ineffective tails can only move so far before its stored up energy runs out. But what? Wait, what is that? Is that, is that a swimming Dittery fruit? This Dittery species seems more animal than fruit. After gaining more improved, now tentacle-like appendages to push itself through the water, it has completely stopped the process of dying mere hours after being thrown off its mother plant. Now with a stomach, a sort of functioning heart, and yes, a fruit that grew out of a plant also grew its very own circular system deal with it. The body that was used to stay attached to its mother plant has now evolved even bigger teeth, kind of like hooks that they now use to hook themselves on plants to eat. Most of these plants evolved for the dittery fruit to grow inside of the plant. Here, after millions of years of evolution, the female dittery now develop the eggs in their own body, fully away from the plant as a whole, as they now use a version of mating called the cloaca kiss. The first wave of species has already shown miraculous forms of evolution and adaptation, and they will surely find themselves in even more peculiar forms as time progresses. Thank you all for watching my first episode on this project. In the next episode we will go over how the dittery plant will evolve when faced with sudden plant eaters, and I'll show in more detail how all the forms of creatures have changed. If you have any ideas for names, do leave them in the comments. If you have any tips, or just want to roast me in the comments for very wrong biology stuff, please do so. Because I mostly made this series to learn fun things, and also practice more with my creative side by drawing, writing and sculpting. But most importantly, I just want to make this series to make fun, imaginative content for everyone to enjoy. See you all in the next episode!